Hey guys, it's Rick, back for day three of my Cinema of Frankenstein, where I'm going through as many Frankenstein movies as I, as I can within the month of October. And today, I have watched The Bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein came out on April 20th, 1935. James Whale returned to the directing role. He didn't really want to. He uh, had to have full creative control if he was going to do this. Uh, and that involved, he discarded the script, didn't care for it, brought in actors that he trusted, brought Colin and Clive back, Boris Karloff, of course, returns as the monster. Um, Valerie Hobson comes in as Elizabeth because the original actress that had played Elizabeth was sickly. This girl was only 17. You can't tell by looking at her, but she's very beautiful for age. Elsa Lanchester is the bride, also plays Mary Shelley in the opening. Ernest Thysinger is Dr. Pretorius, which is a great character on screen. Uh, Dwight Fry even comes in as a new character named Carl, a henchman for uh, Dr. Pretorius. And if you look closely, you'll see John Carradine. Walter Brennan is supposed to be here, but I don't think I spotted him. I'll have to go back and look. Budget of 397 thousand made two million uh the the story focuses on uh, henry frankenstein has he survived the ordeal at the windmill but so has the monster so the monster's all on the rampage um, trying to survive and honestly just trying wanting a friend he runs doing a blind hermit that teaches him how to speak which Boris Karloff wasn't really crazy about this. He didn't like the idea of the monster speaking. But the only charge about... They wanted to keep his intelligence a little bit low. So there was 44 words that were chosen that something like a 10-year-old would say. Just simple words. And, uh... And he speaks. You'll also notice from the fire, his hair is singed. He's got burns. But if you watch the movie, he starts to heal. You can see that, and that was a really cool effect that they kept up with. I never noticed that before, but it turns out that that's what happens if you really pay attention to it. <coughs> it's got a little bit of humor to it. Uh, a few more deaths than the original one. Yeah, and it's... You know, it wasn't a real favorite film of mine. I just didn't care for it growing up, but watching it this time, I really enjoyed it a lot more than I ever have. Uh, Elsa Lanchester, uh, like I said, who plays the bride, she's only in it for just a few minutes. But her, from what I was reading, she was actually only five foot four, but they put her on stilts to make her taller. <coughs> <coughs> help her stand out and be um, really exotic. Her hair, kind of like an Egyptian queen. It's a, it's a neat look. And other than a couple of scars, you know, very beautiful still. So they wanted her to be incredibly beautiful. And I think they pulled that off. I mean, some of the characters have scores. I really like that. Uh, like the bride, Frankenstein's monster. I mean, Dr. Pretorius, uh, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but it's, uh, I mean, it's well done film. I, I really enjoyed it. It's a, a classic that has been loved and considered to be the greatest sequel ever made. Uh, I don't know about that. I have to give that some thought, but it is a solid follow-up. I really enjoy what follows it, I think, a little bit more. But uh, I did enjoy this viewing. It actually was remade as The Bride in 1985. And um, I hope to get to that one sometime this month. But that's it. Bride of Frankenstein's in the books. I will dig for a trailer and link it down below. And as always, take care and go watch a movie.